Duel Links is an absolute treasure. I, like many of you, I would imagine, got back into Yu-Gi-Oh! with the release of Duel Links in November of 2016, at a time when I had been out of Yu-Gi-Oh! for four years. Any card gaming I played at all was the occasional Pokemon locals with my sisters, and my time on the ambulance was mostly spent playing Madden Mobile. Swept along in the hype and marketing push, like everyone else I imagine, and hyped at the opportunity to get back into the game for the first time in years, I ate absolutely everything up. Yugi tubers, meta-analysis, card releases. The release of Duel Links was a backdraft that thrust me back into the Yu-Gi-Oh! landscape in a way that was new and foreign and fantastic. What followed the game's release was my $20 Walmart smartphone perpetually full on data, my EMT partner being forced to listen to play-by-play -play replays and Seto Kaiba voice lines on the long drives back from late night out-of-county transports, and my weekends shut in grinding the KC Cup. Some memories are fonder than others. Now, this isn't meant to be a retrospective on Duel Links as a whole. Believe me, that's a video I want to do, and I'm on the short list of people I feel qualified to do it. My perspective on cards in the TCG, such as Wall of Disruption and Sphere Karibo, are still informed by a degree of Duel Links meta PTSD that will never go away. That video, however, is still a ways off. Additionally, this will not be supplanting the Duel Links gameplay I've promised on Duel Links Thursdays, that will be dropping at 3 p.m. These discussions will be a little earlier. I feel like one of the biggest problems Duel Links is facing now is that no one's talking about it. The game hasn't gotten worse. It's only marginally arguable that Master Duel is a better product than Duel Links. I've dedicated Thursdays on my channel to spread a little love and information about a game that I love dearly and have much to thank for for bringing me back into the game proper. One of the elements of Duel Links that frustrates and fosters joy alike is the game's closed card pool. Essentially, Duel Links introduces curated sets with cards from all era of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history, inserted according to the designer's machinations. It's like playing a cube, granted at this point a very large cube. As an example, Sphere Karibo, a card released in 2015's Dimension of Chaos, was released in Duel Links in the second ever set, long before a card like Fissure, despite that card existing for over a decade before Sphere Karibo was a glimmer in Takahashi's eye. The game's system of skills, smaller decks, zones, and life points, alongside this curated, closed card pool, resulted in a series of metas and relevant cards that to this day bring confusion to TCG diehard's faces. Curated formats are like bouquets of roses, or hand-selected chocolates. They can be deliberately and delicately chosen with love to be given to someone special, a sign of adoration and affection, or they can be randomly picked up from a Walgreens on the way home from work in a desperate bid to salvage a ruined birthday. It all depends on the curator. Duel Links has stood head and shoulders above the rest of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! and card games in general for its astounding success in this closed format. Somehow, despite skills and odd inclusions, structure deck EXs and wonky ban lists, Duel Links has managed to remain mostly playable and always enjoyable throughout its tenure. Today I'd like to do a bit of a walk down memory lane at some of the cards introduced to this closed card pool and their effect, or lack thereof, on the metagame. Elemental hero Brave Neos was the cornerstone of an incredibly powerful deck called Cyberdark Neos, and I apologize for the tingle of fear I'm sure raced down the spine of any 2019 KC Cup players in the audience. This deck combined the consistency and power of the Cyberdark package, which included cards such as Cyberdark Edge and Cannon, with the durability and sheer speed of Neo's Fusion. Neo's Fusion was capable of putting an enormous body in the field in the form of the man himself, who searched additional copies of Neo's Fusion when he had destroyed a monster by battle, could get up to astronomical attack values with the skill Neo Space, and was offered destruction protection via the graveyard effect of the Fusion spell. Brave Neos' fusion materials of one elemental hero Neos and one level 4 or lower effect monster meant that, for the cost of one brick in the deck, you could Foolish Burial and get a powerful monster. Many duelists, myself included, ran Ling Ling and Bacon Saver, a level 3 dragon that could be equipped to edge to form a double attacking direct attacker and an attack negation, respectively. This card would continue to be a staple in many decks for the sheer versatility and power it offered until it was eventually nuked on the Duel Links ban list alongside its relevant fusion spell. One of the stranger elements of the Duel Links meta is the way that card releases synchronize with the game's skills. Taya Gardner had a skill called Duel Standby, which gave each player an extra card in their opening hand at the cost of rendering you unable to activate spells, traps, or monster effects on your opening turn. 
This skill did see use in a number of trap-based strategies, but for the most part went unplayed. You give your opponent an extra card too, and lock yourself out of playing on your first turn. What gives? Enter a mono Awato. A card of questionable power in the TCG, this spirit monster packed a whopping 1900 attack for a normal summon, and completely shut off the ability of players to activate monster effects. Skill drain, but better, as this cut off monster effects from the field, the hand, the grave, everywhere. The only downside, and a major one, was that old spirit monster clause. If this card was normal summoned or flipped face up this turn, return it to the hand during the end phase, an effect that rendered the card borderline unplayable, and was also an effect, and was therefore turned off due to the effect of dual standby, meaning Taya players could normal summon this guy, set a bunch of back row, pass turn, and then on future turns when his effect was live, guess what? He wasn't summoned or set that turn. No returning to the hand for him. A wild skill drain that could be protected with any number of the back row running around the game at the time, such as Wall of Disruption or Mirror Wall, that resulted in the skill getting changed to save the game. A sentence that could probably punctuate the end of many formats and duelings. Quite possibly the most commonly uttered phrase over the history of duelings has to be, wait, they put that in duelings? Usually groaned out with eyes wide open and hands on the table, a testament to the developer's willingness to push the boundaries with what's allowed in a 4K life point format. Looking at you, Libe. Despite the silly inclusions, a steady hand and lack of certain enablers have kept most of these behemoths from being too overly centralizing, with a few notable exceptions. Alistair the Invoker, a card that in the year of our Lord 2022 still had throngs of angry players demanding its ban in the TCG, was released into Duel Links on September 26, 2019, in the set Dark Dimensions, a set that remains, to this day, one of the most meta-impactful leaps in power creep the game has experienced. This almighty mad spellcaster made major waves upon release, despite lacking his best invocation targets and no magical meltdown. It hardly mattered. Players would use cards like Flip Flop Frog or Sentry Golem to get relevant targets into Grave for Kakaitis and Modulanciana, which, considering the advantage the engine afforded, and a lack of comparable normal summons in the game at the time, was more than enough. Mechaba be damned, Kakaitis was a wall. Untargetable, indestructible, huge. Kakaitis was enough to nearly single handedly change the name of the format from Speed Duels to Good Luck Outing This Duels. Much like his role in the TCG, Alistair saw play in an astronomical number of topping decks, and could use cards like Concentrating Current of all things, which turned Modulenciana into a surprise OTK out of the blue, that led to every single card involved in that combo getting hit. That's right, Modulenciana, a vanilla fusion monster, got semi-limited alongside Concentrating Current, Kakaitis got limited and would eventually get banned. This is the beginning of a series of discussion videos I'll be making every Thursday in conjunction with the usual Dual Links Thursday long-form chill video content. Depending on the feedback, I might make follow-up videos to each of these where I analyze comments and talk about your perspectives too. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe, and leave in the comments your perspective on Dual Links curated format. And what card do you think is the best or worst inclusion to the meta historically? Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to wash behind your ears.